Hey everyone, welcome to Daily. We're gonna be reading today from 1 Corinthians 5 and we're gonna talk a little bit about baking today. But before we get started, let's pray. Well, Lord, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would enlighten to us, Lord, what we need to see and hear today, Lord. We just pray that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct us. And we thank you for everything in Jesus' name, amen. I can hardly believe the report about the sexual immorality going on among you, something that even pagans don't do. I am told that a man in your church is living in sin with his stepmother. You are so proud of yourselves, but you should be mourning in sorrow and shame, and you should remove this man from your fellowship. Even though I am not with you in person, I am with you in spirit. And as though I were there, I have already passed judgment on this man in the name of the Lord Jesus. You must call a meeting of the church. I will present with you in spirit, and so will the power of our Lord Jesus. Then you must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed, and he himself will be saved on the day the Lord returns. Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. Then you will be like a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the festival not with the old bread of wickedness and evil, but with the new bread of sincerity and truth. When I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about unbelievers who indulge in sexual sin or are greedy or cheat people or worship idols. You would have to leave this world to avoid people like that. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer yet indulges in sexual sin or is greedy or worships idols or is abusive or is a drunkard or cheats people. Don't even eat with such people. It isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders, but it certainly is your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. God will judge those on the outside, but as the scriptures say, you must remove the evil person from among you. Paul is like mortified about a relationship that's going on in the Corinthian church. There's this man who apparently has a sexual relationship with his stepmother and basically no one is saying anything about it. Everyone knows about it, but no one's willing to say anything about it. And Paul writes them, verse two, you are so proud of yourselves, but you should be mourning in sorrow and shame. And you should remove this man from your fellowship. He says, you're acting like you have a healthy church, but you need to address this situation. Obviously, there's sin inside of it. And basically, his anger doesn't come from a place of being so disgusted by this sin. His anger actually comes from a place of being angry that they're not doing anything about it. They're not saying anything about it. They're not addressing the situation. And you see, this is dangerous for two reasons. One, it's dangerous for them as a church, right? It's, it's dangerous for the, the community, in fact. Verse 6 says, Don't you realize that sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch of dough? He says, You can't put yeast in one corner of the loaf. He says, It's going to go everywhere. And he says the same thing. By not addressing this, you're kind of giving this silent nod to this is okay. And other people might think that it's okay as well in the church. But also, it's dangerous for that person. In fact, he says this in verse 5, throw that man out and hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed. He says that if you don't address this, this person can't repent. They think that it's okay as well. And that sounds really harsh, right? Throw them out of the, of the community so that you can hand them over to Satan. But listen what it says again. It says so that his sinful nature will be destroyed, not him, and that he himself will be saved on the day the Lord returns. It's actually saying that by not giving them this nod of, yeah, everything's fine, by saying you obviously can't be part of this community. This community is about loving God, and you're specifically continuing to indulge in something that hurts God's heart. He's just going to make that person have to deal with that and hopefully repent, turn away from it, and they'll be saved. Paul gives this command. Don't associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. Don't be friends with people, have a relationship with those who indulge in sexual sin. And of course he says, I wasn't talking about pre-Christians, you'd have to leave the world in order for that to happen. But he says about those who claim Christ. In fact, verse 11, here's what it says. I meant that you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer, yet indulges in sexual sin. Or, look at this, is greedy, or who worships idols, 
or is abusive or is a drunkard or who cheats people, don't even eat with such people. You're not even supposed to sit down and have a meal with them. He says, if there are people who say that they are Jesus followers, but they refuse to repent of these sins, they just keep them in their life, then you need to remove yourself from that so that you protect yourself and also illustrate to them that they need to repent of this, right? Some people are like, well, that sounds really judgy to me, Cameron. That sounds really judgy. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe you've misinterpreted what the Bible says on this um, because you've just read Jesus' words and, of course, everyone quotes, thou shalt not judge. Listen to what verse 12 says. It isn't my responsibility, okay, to judge outsiders. Not my responsibility. But it certainly is your responsibility, the church, to judge those inside the church who are sinning. Don't miss this, okay? God's responsibility is judging those outside of the church and eternally, okay? Our responsibility is judging those inside the church and currently, okay? We can't judge their eternity, but those who are inside the church, we can speak into their life and say, what you're doing in your life does not line up with God's word. And if people are tolerating these sins, and very often they're like, well, only God can judge me. Very often you have noticed about people who say only God can judge me. They don't actually even want God to judge them. They don't actually trust that statement. It's, that's a lie because they don't actually believe that God will judge them and that they're going to put themselves under their authority. What it means is I'm God and I'll judge me. But basically those who claim to be believers that we're supposed to look at their life and say, this doesn't line up. You need to repent. Reflect with me for a second. Are you friends with someone who claims to be a believer, yet their life is consistently filled with sexual sin, greed, abuse, drunkenness, cheating, or devaluing God? Think about it for a second. Who are your friends who claim to be Christians, but are their lives also marked by those pieces? Now I invite you to act. If you have those people, you need to remove yourself from relationship with them. You need to cut that relationship off and not even have dinner with those people. It is dangerous for you, but also they might even ask you, why are we no longer friends? And you might say, listen, we can't be in relationship because you refuse to repent of this sin and you need to. And maybe that will be the opportunity for them to repent and turn. Move forward by faith today.